My name is Clark and I'm a Master of Science in Computer Science student in the School of Technology and Computing uh, in City University of Seattle. Uh, my capstone title is called Software Documentation and Architectural Analysis of Full Stack Development. My advisors are Dr. Jin Chang and Dr. Sam Chung. Uh, this is my outline. Let's skip through this. My motivation is basically um, we all have a, known about open source software it's uh we heard about people saying hey um go go open source go contribute it's easy anyone can just join in make a pull request however um open source software has a really big barrier and there's with without any support for visual architectural modeling people take take a large amount of time to understand the code base and be able to contribute to that and why is that? Because again, these technologies in open source is very complex and has steep learning curve. Basically, the non-existence of any documentation makes it further complicated. Uh, full stack development as well is difficult and it requires complex knowledge of the technology stack as you have different technologies interacting with one another. And another motivation is um, from Al Hajani 2019 is Basically, he looked at 255 uh, document issues and uh, out of the 250, uh, 955, 227 of them were about missing or poor documentation and missing diagrams on open source projects. So how can we reduce the steep learning curve for open source and full stack web development? And the question is, why do we need to reduce it? Well, reducing the steep learning curve basically increases your return on investment for software development. It will basically lead to faster building of new features, fixing of bugs. And again, it lessens the um, cost for your resources. Uh, what is learning curve? Um, learning curve is how fast a person would gain the experience or skill. The first uh, chart or a graph you would see is the normal learning curve and the right image would show you the steep learning curve as you can see it takes more time to even uh, increase your knowledge and what is um, documentation in the open source um, it's by convention that we use the readme.md um, it's basically analogous to a website for uh, let's say an e-commerce or a cloud provider so having a good readme.md would again attract more developers or user to stick a while research or maybe contribute and for architectural analysis we'll be using the four plus one view of Kruchen and uses the uml notation we have the logical view implementation view dynamic view or also called process view deployment view and last use case view or scenario view and full stack, we're using the mean stack, which includes the MongoDB database, um, Express as the back end framework, Angular as a front end framework, Node.js as the back end runtime environment. And now for the previous work, we do uh, use as the uh, have research on the architectural model given to the existing textbook documentation. It's basically gives the benefit of increasing the understanding of new users for that functionality of the software or technology. And here are my key papers. And as you can see, um, not some of them misses the documentation. Some of them doesn't hit the open source. Some of them doesn't hit the full stack as well. And again, this is the four plus one view model. And now it's just showing you the different users of those different views. And this is the development view using the package diagram from Admiral. And this is the process view from Stafford 2015. Um, it basically shows you the data request and response flow. Uh, this is a previous work from Kim Chung and Andy Kotpovsky. Uh, this is the deployment view and shows you the uh, deployment view using a uh, physical view, sorry, using deployment diagram. Okay, uh, this is the logical view using the class diagram from Salma. And this is a scenario or use case view. Shows you also the request response flow with having the user and a use case. 
And for my approach, I basically want to hit all the documentation, 4 plus 1 view, open source, and full stack. And in my implementation, I'm going to be grabbing all of the good stuff, which is the 4 plus 1 view, design view, experiment validation, uh, Admiral's color coded diagrams. And these are my sources. It's basically hands on practice documentation and software architecture to build this um, capstone. Um, also, some video walkthroughs for my tools. The way I created those is using VS Code, GitHub, mean full stack, lucid charts to create my diagrams. And this will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. And for the theory, uh, we're using the uh, 5W1H redoc and 4 plus 1 views. The demo is the bookstore web app. And the implementation using um, physical view using deployment diagram, in this case, deployment in the cloud, you would see uh, three big cubes. One is the front end server, back end server, and database server as the respective devices. And they all communicate with HTTPS. And again, in each server, we do have each cloud provider with AWS. And um, for backend, it's also Amazon Web Services. And database, we have MongoDB Atlas. And I would also show you the cloud solution that was used for the cloud providers. For the front end, we have the S3 bucket. The back end, we have the EC2 instance. And the execution environment is basically browser for the front end. And the red color is the Angular application with the HTTP uh, URL showing in the component. And in the back end, the execution environment is Node.js and has the Express application framework. And then the component is basically another URL, again, to make the HTTPS uh, communication. For the database, we have MongoDB as the NoSQL database, and we have the URL as well. And the author also created um, its his own version of uh, the deployment diagram. This basically shows you how to easily spot the front end using S3 bucket, uh, the back end using the ec 2 instance, and the database server using MongoDB Atlas. And to also show that the HTTP endpoints that they communicate using a JSON data. Uh, as learning curve is the main topic as well, to easily represent like how the mean stack request response work, I created a restaurant analogy, which basically has the user, which is the customer controller with the waiter service factory order window as part of the front end with the customer ordering and the waiter sending that order to the window order window and then now that order window would now request to the cook or the controller which also includes the model and that back end would now request to the data storage which is the fridge to grab that chicken and now that's from left to right, and next would be right to left. The database would now respond with giving that chicken the data, and now the cook can process that, and let's say you just give back a drumstick to the front end or the service uh, factory order window, and that order window can now um, give to the waiter the drumstick, and the waiter would now give that drumstick to the user or customer so he can consume that data. So for the process view, again, we have front end, back end, data tier. The red ones are the front end and we basically uh, interact first with the route. The route will be redirected to the respective view and the view would now interact with the controller and the controller calls the service to retrieve the data. The service would make an HTTP request to a RESTful endpoint which is the route of the back end. Uh, the route would now redirect to the respective controller or model, and that would itself request through Mongoose ODM and would query the database. The database would process the request and now would satisfy the callback of the back end. And from that, controller can now send back a JSON response. With, this, with now the front end service can now um, send back an object, and with the controller can now help display view to the template with the data. This scenario view using sequence diagram, you basically just add the user there and the use case of, let's say, hitting a URL off the homepage 
and instead of showing the route controller model we now see the components being uh, interacted with as the router app routing module component books component injectable fetch books router app.get controller fetch books model book and um, it's basically the same thing with how we uh, describe each step with the last one if we go around it and it goes back to the user we show this display data plus template view to the user and for this um, this is called the development view uh, using package diagram and the use case is for the angular modules component and services this just shows you like the app modules which imports a lot of different components services and other routing modules from different files or folders within one code base uh, as well as this is the um, again the development view using package diagram for our node.js or express the back end uh, it shows you the app that imports a lot of um, different functions of um, book methods and it shows you where is it located for those different modules as well um, for the logical view using class diagram it's a very very simple example hence we only have one um, uh, entity which is book and it has uh, five properties or attributes which is title isbn order picture and price and it has five methods called add book fetch books fetch book update book and delete book and I also created an, a non-UML diagram for NoSQL to represent that our database has a, it, it in the JSON format with keys, title, ISBN, author, picture, and price. For the evaluation method, we had uh, students go over two types of documentation. One group would be given this survey for official documentation for MinStack, and the other group would basically have this survey with the author's documentation. As part of the evaluation process, before they even begin to read the documentation, we would ass assess their level of knowledge or experience with our main topics or keywords with documentation, architectural analysis, UML, full stack web application, mean stack, open source. And again, they have to rate their level of knowledge. And these are the questions. After they read through the documentation for the respective, uh, the official one and the author's documentation, uh, it would ask them if the documentation increased their understanding, ask them which description was the most helpful, ask them which images or diagram was most helpful for understanding, um, check which diagrams is most helpful as well, and show and tell the uh, overall rating of the documentation and asking for suggestions and feedback. And again, the evaluation method was used through a student research group participation, which might have potential bias due to the testers and test subjects acquainted with one another. The survey had a small sample size that might not be considered a good representation. And this shows you uh, the survey for official documentation, the before reading the documentation, and also for the survey for all this documentation. If you see more blue and red, it means we have more... Uh, Participants who have no knowledge or little knowledge for uh, all the topics that we mentioned or keywords. If you see more purple and green, it means they have more experience in those topics. And as you can see, participants in the author's documentation has more experience. And we put them side by side. And for the questions of, of this, was the description in the documentation helpful? It, you can see that the author's documentation has a better rating with having more fours and five as a score and for the questions were the images diagrams helpful in your understanding we have more uh, responses as well in the author's documentation more uh, better scores and the overall rating as well and to uh, conclude these results and findings we ha find the average return of high level understanding to 15 minute time spent and we got a rating of 67% for official documentation and 80% for the author's documentation with author's documentation being 30% better than the official documentation. For the future work, uh, you, with the use of UML notation, you can just add or delete some of the technology stack and it's easy to extend that. 
Um, we use the scenario view using the sequence diagram and physical view using deployment diagram for mean stack and extend that with offline capabilities, which is one of the features of progressive web app or PWA. PWA is an enhancement strategy to create cross-platform web application. And this is extending the scenario view. We just um, added in the middle, the pink color, which is the web storage index DB, uh, adding that injectable book offline service and showing this conditional uh, box or diagram. Um, if the internet connectivity is all offline, the uh, the front end will check the cache and return the data if it's there if it's internet connectivity is online would we'll do the same but it will also request http to the back end and would we'll go through the same uh, process query the database and send back a json to not only the front end but also update the web storage and for the physical view with pwa is we added the, the network proxy, the storage cache, storage index DB, and the inside of Angular application, we do add the index DB wrapper, DEXJS, to again enable the service worker and enable the caching stuff that we do. And in conclusion, again, learning curve from the open source full stack development is potentially or decreased already with the use of high-level overview diagrams. Again, the author's documentation got a 30% uh, rating, better rating than the official documentation to decrease the learning curve. Also, uh, additional documentation with architectural modeling adds additional time and resources to build. And to combat this, we basically need to build high-level overview diagrams instead of lower level as well. Also, most open source full stack development uh, applications only have text descriptions and code base which make it very verbose it's so hard to understand so adding this architectural modeling would now uh, make the understanding for these technologies very very easy to grasp again that it would let them digest high level concept thus decreasing the learning curve for the developers and these are my references and if you have further questions as this is a video, put comments down below or send me a message on LinkedIn. And again, for the documentation, just go to my GitHub with this link. Thank you.